Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Ryder here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. This procedure is all for all the people who enjoy dead skin peels. We have a dead skin peel from both ears from the same patient, including off the eardrums. It's a very delicate procedure in both ears. This client is actually uh, a hearing aid client of mine and they attend every three months to have this dead skin keratin peeled off the medial, so uh, near to the eardrum, the medial ear canal and the eardrum. And the, they know that they need their ears clean and the wax removed, sorry, the dead skin removed when their hearing aid starts whistling. So you may have sat beside someone on the bus before um, who wears a hearing aid and their hearing aid whistles. Uh, a hearing aid whistles um, is called acoustic feedback or feedback loop and it's triggered by the sound that's amplified into the ear canal. If that amplified sound is reflected and bounced back out of the ear and it re-enters the hearing aid microphone, the hearing aid reprocesses and amplifies sound that has already been processed and re-amplified and as that sound bounces back out of the ear, it re-enters the hearing aid microphone. We get this loop, and we call that a feedback loop, and it creates a, a really loud, high-frequency squeal. It's very annoying, not only for the patient, but for those around the patient. So this dead skin in this patient's ear, when it collects, it causes her hearing aid to, to feedback, to whistle, and the patient knows that she needs to make an appointment. Um, the reason for this build-up is that the skin that lines the eardrum also lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal. It's a very thin layer of skin. Um, it's kind of in thickness, you're looking at less than 0.1 millimeters. And in most people, as the skin that lines the outer layer of the eardrum and this, uh, the bony part of the ear canal, the inner two thirds, as it sheds, it naturally migrates outwards like a conveyor belt. It, it's a bit like a snake skin, it sheds it dies and it migrates outwards. But in this patient, the skin, it's migrating to um, where the isthmus is. So about a half a centimeter away from the ear drum, the ear canal narrows and then it protrudes back outwards. And unfortunately for this patient, the skin, as it's shedding and migrating outwards like a conveyor belt, it's getting trapped at this narrowing, this isthmus, and it's no longer migrating. And then this skin is building up. In fact, this is a very early onset of someone who may later if they didn't receive treatment, um, suffers from keratosis obturans. If this patient didn't have a hearing aid and they didn't have a hearing loss, they may not attend regularly as they are to have the skin removed. And if not, this skin can eventually build up, build up, build up and lead to keratosis obturans. Um, in the past, I would ask the patient to soften this dead skin using a bit of sodium bicarbonate drops, but the patient finds that when using the sodium bicarbonate drops, it does sometimes cause a bit of irritation in the ears. So we decided from here on just to perform a, a completely dry procedure. It's a bit more tricky because it takes a bit more work me peeling this off the eardrum without the help of any um, sodium bicarbonate drops. But nonetheless, we're, we're managing to do it and we're using a fine end tip. So the fine end is attached to the standard zone suction probe. And I use the fine end for very delicate procedures near the eardrum. And you can just see how narrow this patient's ear canal is. So this canal wall where, where the fine tip is, again, it's almost against, that's the anterior canal wall. We want to avoid contact with that. And this patient's isthmus, where the reason why she's getting this skin build up is very narrowed in, it, uh, in this region, is this juncture. The patient, in general, the ear canal is a narrow ear canal. So, Remember, when we go into the ear, the entrance of the ear canal is approximately 0.8 to 0.9 millimetres in height and around 0.5 to 0.7 millimetres in width. So it's a very narrow entrance to the ear canal. And we've got the endoscope, which is a diameter 2.7 millimetres. You've got the zonal suction probe, which is the internal lumen anyway, is 2 millimetres. Um, so if you at the thickness of the, the tube itself, you're probably looking at 2.4. You can it gives, it gives you an idea. It's very sometimes very difficult to insert instrumentation in the ear. And it's one thing inserting instrument instrumentation into the ear, but then 
having the ability to manipulate the instrument, so to maneuver the fine end up and down, left and right, to peel the skin off. So in this particular patient, it was quite tricky because she did have a, a very narrow ear canal entrance as well, which provides less space for me to operate with inside the ear, but we, we, we manage. Um, there is a bit of skin left in the anterior recess um, on that side, which is very difficult to obtain access to. So I've just got the fine end tip. I've bent the distal length, the bit where the sucker is itself, just to enable me to curve around the anterior canal wall so I don't make contact. You can see we've just managed to remove that bit of skin. Bit left there, I think I just left that behind. Oh, no, I managed to get it. So there's the patient's eardrum. So we're just on the left side now. And here I'm using this, this dead keratin is a lot thicker. Uh, it's a lot more adhered, so the fine end wouldn't be strong enough here. So I've had to use a standard zone suction probe, but we were getting a bit of clarinetting. So clarinetting is when this dead skin violently flaps at the tip of the suction probe and it emits a very loud high frequency squeal. So I've had to stop at that point with the standard zone suction probe and I've reverted back to the fine end, but I'm just finding it quite difficult peeling this thick layer of skin off the eardrum and the medial ear canal wall using the fine end. It's just not strong enough, so I'm tugging away at it. You will see me in a moment re-enter the ear using some crocodile forceps. Uh, but the forceps, uh, they just shredded the dead skin into little pieces, so it didn't extract much of the dead skin off. So I'm just using the fine end, I'm just going to the roof of the ear canal, trying to detach this thick layer of skin from the ear canal and the roof, the, the superior aspect. Superior means at the top. And I'm now trying to loosen this skin anteriorly from the anterior canal wall. Similarly to the left ear, the patient's ear canal entrance was a bit narrow which can sometimes restrict the range of movement we have inside the ear. I can see at the top, I'm just peeling this off the eardrum. And it, again, so related to the first ear, this patient's isthmus, so there's a, quite a pronounced narrowing about half a centimetre away from the eardrum. And that's where this skin is collecting. It's, it's migrating to this point, but then it's getting trapped. It's not migrating any further. And, if this was left untreated, the patient would develop uh, very serious keratosis obturans, which is just a buildup of dead skin plugs, uh, normally, typically medially deep in the ear canal. So I think in a moment I'm going to revert back to um, so I'm going to revert to the crocodile forceps and this gives you uh, some perspective of how narrow the patient's ear canal is. This forceps is almost completely occluding, so blocking the entire ear canal. If you see some of my other videos, if you look at the playlist on the crocodile forceps removal, you will see that even with the crocodiles in the ear, uh, you, still, you can still see a lot of the ear canal here. The crocodiles is almost completely obscured the view of the ear canal, just gives you some perspective. I've had no choice but to revert back to the standard zone suction probe because the forceps weren't really helping. Uh, but at this stage, I wasn't getting any clarinetting. The fine end suction tip I used previously detached the skin enough for me to now use the, uh, the standard zone suction probe. There's the patient's tympanic membrane. You can see this narrowing. We're going to go back in. You'll see it just where the suction probe is now. It narrows and the ear canal produce outwards. Just some dry skin on the tympanic membrane, the eardrum. So I've just gone back in. I think there's a bit left at the back of the eardrum posteriorly. And again, just around the isthmus, this narrowing is a bit of dry skin, dead skin. that I'm just trying to mop up, peel as much as I can. But remember, we want to avoid making contact with this bony part of the ear canal, um, it will be quite painful for the patient. In terms of how would you describe the pain, imagine uh, you've got an uh, exposed two, so the enamel's exposed and the roots are uh, exposed and you, you make contact, you know, so if your teeth are very sensitive and you have a cold drink on ice cream, that kind of acute pain, that's what patients often experience if you make contact with the bony part of the ear canal.
so it's just a bit of character left there. We've, we've just left that. Um, so I've just recommended the patient, um, they don't want to be using sodium bicarbonate drops, which is normally very good for skin, dead skin. Um, so they're going to be trying some olive oil spray and some ear calm, some acetic acid to see if that helps. But otherwise, uh, they'll be back in three months to have the dead skin removed um, to stop the hearing aid from whistling. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, have a great evening, and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.